What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, MCJ, back with another video. And I'm doing what I priced I would do, I'm covering SharePoint. <laughs> so we're gonna start looking at the, the SharePoint triggers and the SharePoint actions after that. And we're gonna go through them all, we're gonna document them, we're gonna show you how to use them, we're gonna tell you what all the settings are, and we're going to help level up your SharePoint game. So we're gonna start off in the uh, in the new uh, the new flow designer. So this is the new designer. If you've not watched my last video, you should check it out. And what we'll do is we will add a trigger. So click on trigger, and we will search for SharePoint. SharePoint, just spelled correctly. And we'll click on see more. And we've got all of our different triggers here. And we're gonna choose this top one when an item is created. So the first thing it's going to ask for is the site address. So this is the SharePoint site address that you're searching for. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to hard code it in and say MCJ site one. This is one of my SharePoint sites that I've got set up. You can use, uh, you can also use an environment variable in here as well. So if you want to move through a proper dev um, UAT slash test and, and production environments, you can absolutely do that with solutions, environment variables, and put the environment variable in here. Uh, similarly, the um, the list name is actually a filtered dropdown of the site addresses. So you search the site address and then you, you filter the lists in that site. So I've got MCJ list one and MCJ list two. We'll choose MCJ list one. Again, this is all configurable with environment variables. There's a couple of other things down here. So we have show advanced parameters. So we do have some advanced parameters. If I click on show all, we have this parameter here, which is limit columns by view. So what this does is this actually, um, you can create a custom view inside of SharePoint. Um, we do have a couple, of, uh, a couple of default options here, which is uh, use all columns, do not limit, and all items. So what this actually does is this doesn't limit the amount of rows that come back, but this will limit the amount of um, columns that come back. So if you have a SharePoint list that says hey, that says that may have something like 50 columns, but for your flow you actually only need to bring back three columns, that'll actually be easier to work with than bringing back everything. So you may want to create a view to limit and just bring back those three that you want and then use those in your flow. Um, so you can choose use all columns or, or all items. Um, we're not going to specify uh, anything in here, so we'll just use, use all columns for instance. Um, and that'll be fine, but you can limit the amount of data that comes back. Secondly, how often do you want to check for items? So we've got this, uh, these details here. So we've got, um, hello cat. Um, so we've got uh, interval. So this is the, the, the number to check for and then frequency. So at the moment it's, it's set up to look every three minutes to see if there's a new item. So what this actually means is that Power Automate doesn't have any sort of webhook or any sort of like triggering action inside of SharePoint. What it actually does is it pulls the SharePoint site every you know three minutes in this instance to find if there's any new data. And if there is, it goes and gets that data and brings that back and, and then triggers the flow. So you can configure this how you like. So it goes down to seconds and it goes up to months. So you could say, hey, every month check for new items. If there is a new item, bring them all back and we'll, we'll do some things so if you have like a monthly audit sort of thing. Or we could say every minute, every three minutes, something like that. So what we'll do is we'll configure this to, to one minute in this instance, oops. Um, and we can say, right, okay, every one minute, go off and check, check for new data and then bring it back. Um, similarly, we can check for, a, we can configure this to actually start um, or, or run, um, start at a certain time and run uh, based on the time zone. So we could choose a different time zone and say, hey, um, I want the time zone to be, um, you know, um, Caracas, for instance. Um, and then that actually leads into the, the start time. So the start time is the, um, the, the ISO standard for, for time, so year, month, day, and then T, and then the time, and then um, Z for Zulu at the end. And what this means is you could set this up to say, right, okay, I want this flow to run every one minute from this date based and this time based on this time zone. So I could say I want this to run um, next week. Um, I want it to start um, based on you know GMT or BST or you know UTC, 
and I want it to start from this time and it'll start running from then. So it actually allows you to kind of future proof this thing a little bit. So if you know your integrations aren't gonna start until you know next week, for instance, or next month, you don't want this to run all the time. You don't want it to be triggering all the time. So the start time is actually specifying when you want this to start looking for new items from and the time zone allows you to configure which time zone that starts in. We're not going to use any of those, we're just going to uh, close this up and we will um, we'll add another action into it. So if I click on insert a new step, add an action, and then choose compose, uh, choose the compose action, and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the dynamic content that comes back from this action. So we have a list of things here, so we have things like ID, title, color tag, compliance ID, we've got the create done, create email, create by job title, you get a lot of information about the person that creates this or modifies it. Uh, we have things like, uh, is a folder, so is this a, a folder, is this an item that's gone up there? Um, we can get some of the thumbnails, a link to the item, that's kind of useful. So we get like a lot of different um, things in here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to choose the title. And now I say, okay, just tell me what the title is. And um, so when, when we create the new item, we're just going to um, bring back the title and we'll, we'll show that. So let's click save, get a green bar, and then we'll click on test. And we'll say we'll manually trigger this and we'll choose test. Now, differently from how it will usually work, um, when I run this test, it'll actually start polling um, SharePoint. So I think irrespective of what you choose in the option for like how often to check for new items, this will actually work slightly differently um, because we're testing it. So what we're gonna do is put in test three uh, and we'll choose save. So this is my SharePoint list. This is me adding a new item to my SharePoint list. Goes in there, test three, and we'll go back to our flow and we'll wait for it to finish polling and pull back the data. Cool, and we can see that, that ran successfully. Uh, it only took 0.1 second to uh, to to run, uh, although the actual time was a little bit longer. So maybe it does still do some sort of element of the polling, but um, during my testing, it, it didn't seem to wait um, sort of three or four minutes. Uh, it did seem to happen pretty instantaneously. Um, so we can see the inputs that we that we have, and then we can see the the outputs as well. So if I pop it over here. Um, and we go down to the body, we can see we get some internal IDs, we get the title, we get the time in which we did it, uh, we get a bunch of information about the author, so this is me, a um, bunch of information about other things, uh, some links to things and stuff like that. So if I go into the compose action here, I can see, uh, well I should see, uh, the name, uh, but it's not appearing for some reason. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna blame the new designer for this. Um, for some reason, when I put this in um, in the new designer, it didn't pull out the title. Uh, putting this in in the old designer, um, it does pull out the title. So I just rerun the same test here. So if we click on edit, we can still see its title. So all I did was removed it and re-added it. Um, I hit test, uh, went, went through the same test that I just did, um, and this time it works. So it comes, so it's flow around successfully and we can see the input and the output is that. So I, I'm gonna chalk that one up to the, the new designer, but it's not gonna deter me, we're still gonna use it. We'll see how, how we get on with it. Um, so good good example for the new designer and, and maybe you know not everything's uh, working as expected because it is new, it is in preview. Um, so you can, you can check it out now. Um, so yeah, so there we have it. So that is a way for you to trigger things based on um, based on, on Power Automate and, and based on new items being created. What do you guys think? Is this something that you use all the time? Do you have any tips on, on, on what you do? Do you use the filter in the rows, the limit rows, um, limit columns uh, by the view? Do you do you add in any, any filtering? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and share it with a friend, that'd be great. If you've not already, click the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos, and I'll see you next time.